What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to be sharing some training that I did from last Friday. In this first part, I'm going to be doing some footwork. In the next part, I'm going to be doing some heavy back drills and I'm going to share some tips there as well. For the beginning, I wanted to get warmed up and practice my footwork and shadow boxing. This is a great way to start your workouts. It's going to help you cover the basics and work on your balance and movement, which is really good. A common problem or mistake as a beginner is that you have trouble attacking and defending, usually because it's you get stuck in one place. You don't know how to punch and move. You don't know how to defend and move. You don't know how to attack and move or block and move. Um, so you want to practice your footwork pattern. You'll see here I'm doing forward footwork, backwards footwork, stepping, power stepping, left to right, lateral footwork, V-step or diagonal footwork, changing up the tempo on how fast I'm moving. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's fast to trick your opponent or to put more power behind certain strikes that you're going to do. So footwork is very important. Also as a beginner, you're probably going to have trouble on your weight balance or weight distribution. There's times and places where I am heavy on the back leg, so I have a light lead leg, or I'm heavy on the front leg so I can sit down on some punches. It just really depends. So that's why you need to practice this so you're aware of your body and how it feels with certain techniques and where your weight is. Okay. Another thing with footwork, when you're first getting started, a common mistake is to cross your feet. You want to usually stay about shoulder width apart so you have good balance. So you see here I'm just starting to add some striking into the footwork patterns that I'm doing. Pretty much just shadow boxing loosening up before I get into hitting the bag. So here you're going to see a shuffle step or a shuffle step type footwork for that front round kick that I'm doing there on the bag. Now I played this video back and this is actually like my 10th voiceover. Um, the boxing combo combos that I'm going to be doing are a bit fast for me to break down all of them without making a super long video. So I'm gonna kinda give generalized tips uh, as I'm going. This is circular footwork, learning to circle away from your opponent or have them follow and chase you. Usually I'll do circular type footwork because a lot of times you don't just wanna move linearly back or linearly forward, you need to move side to side and circle your opponent. It's very good for getting them to follow you and your pace. So you'll see that I'm going through some combos. For straight punches, you want to make sure you're getting full extension, your shoulders covering your chin, things like that. Making sure your guard is tight. For hooks, you want to make sure you're pivoting. You'll see that I'm going low and high and I'm staying a bit close to the bag, I'm trying to stay in punching range right now. And as a beginner you want to practice either being on the outside for your uh, punches or on the inside to transition into infighting. You'll see I'm going high and low on the hook as well. This is a good way to get your opponent to react by thinking you're going to go down to the body and boom you come back up top. A common mistake with hooks is to drop the rear hand or defending hand. You want to get the hand by your face or chin to defend while you attack with the other hand. So here, I'm trying to focus that my power is coming from the ground up all the way through my shoulders. Sometimes you'll see that I'm loading up my shoulders for more rotational power. some slip movement, some infighting, 
using my body to push my opponent away, getting out of there, backing up. You'll notice a common thing to do, or once you get better, is really start to visualize that back as like your opponent. Fighting from the outside using your long range weapons, to fighting to the inside using your short range weapons, like your elbows and knees and being able to uh, transition between those kind of combinations. So now I'm working more so punches and round kicks. And here I'm trying to emphasize in the video that on my round kick I was really rotating and pivoting on my standing leg. And now I'm getting back more into punching. A uh, thing you want to practice with the heavy bag is timing. There goes a low high combination, low down to the body with the cross, back up top of the hook. Timing of movement. So you'll see how I'm trying to add in my footwork by going to the side, circling, in and out, forward and back. There goes that round kick, really pivoting, turning my hips and shoulders, making sure my guard is up as well. There I'm throwing some straight punches, trying to be loose on my shoulders, just letting them go. Some switch hitting. You'll see, now I'm doing a uh, crash, what I'd call a crash, moving from the outside and then crashing into the bag with a chain move, like cross elbow, cross knee. So for my push kicks, right now I actually felt like I was forcing them. I don't think my legs were warmed up enough. So for push kicks, I'm trying to keep them um, at a good rep, at a good pace. So I'm shooting them out, shooting them out, shooting them out, knee up, drive, hitting with the ball of my foot, making sure I'm trying to get my hips into the kick. But I wasn't warmed up enough and I felt like I was forcing them. So I'm gonna transition to the other bag to kind of loosen up the legs and practice that form. I don't know why I did that, but I just wanted to go to the other bag. So here I'm slowing it down. You'll notice that I'm chopping on the same side that is throwing the teep kick or push kick. That's gonna be to help counterbalance my weight. Now I'm gonna be going into some round kicks. I do about like 25 here, back to back. Notice how I'm pivoting on my standing legs. I'm turning my hips and shoulders. I'm connecting with my shin. Right now my knee's kind of bent. Depending how I'm kicking and where I'm kicking, I'm either gonna have a bent knee or a straight leg to hit more like a bat. It just depends. You wanna practice both ways in my opinion. And when I first kicked, I wasn't able to kick like this. I had to practice a lot. And now I'm just having some fun, adding some jumping techniques. I haven't added jumping techniques really in a while to my training, but they are fun to do, whether it's jumping push kicks or flying knees, jumping knees, right? Boom. This next part, I'm going into just a flow without my gloves, um, bare knuckle practice I guess you can call it, but I'm not hitting hard, I'm just working some techniques and combinations, flowing. When I practiced uh, Jeet Kune Do, there was a lot of practice with bare knuckle punching on pads and we didn't really use boxing gloves at all. But when I got more into Muay Thai, we always trained with boxing gloves. I would say if you're gonna hit the bag, 
just be safe and use gloves, wrap your hands and wrists. You don't want to get injured, really, unnecessarily. So just train safe. You see that grab that I'm doing on the bag when I throw my knee? It's because I'm like pulling the bag into me. I'm imagining that clinch. Now I'm gonna get into some knees. I used to do this more often. I haven't done it in a while, but skip knees are really fun. And they're very tiring. It's like doing mini crunches each time you're throwing that knee into the bag. This is also a really good way to uh, scrape your knees. I still have some scabs from last Friday, but I'm all good now. So I'm trying to throw my knees straight. I'm angling them a little bit into the bag and I'm trying to find my rhythm and tempo staying on my tiptoes so I can keep driving the knees. And I got a good clinch on that bag so I can also pull the bag into the knee, right? You're pulling the person into your knee. So it's a little bit of a push-pull movement. You'll notice that my head is kind of close to the bag. Sometimes my forehead is glued onto that bag as if I'm clinching. Jumping push kick because why not? And now I'm throwing some more knees. I was honestly just trying to burn myself out. I had like too much caffeine so I just figured I'd throw more knees and practice that technique of jumping and kneeing at the same time to drive. When you throw your knee on the bag, you really want to tuck your leg and I like to point my toes down to the ground and drive with the hips. Here I'm practicing some jumping knees because why not? It's fun. And right now, I actually felt like my rhythm or my switch was off. So I kept doing it a couple times. It still felt off. I think maybe because I was tired. This was actually my second workout. I did a whole 50 minutes of boxing earlier to this workout. And um, coach made us do 100 sit-ups. And honestly, I don't really train abs anymore. But I'm going to start because summer's coming up. I've been doing a lot of hanging leg raises and rotational ab workouts. Alright you guys, this is going to be the end of the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll be happy to try to answer them. Happy training. Peace.